Okay, let's look at another example here. Uh, exact same setup. Only thing is the numbers are different. Uh, before you watch this video, just encourage you to uh, go and solve this one for yourself. Uh, it's exactly the same setup. All the formulas are the same. The only thing is different is the number. So if you can do this here, then hopefully this is a, you've got a good handle on these formulas um, and, and you're in a good place going forward. Because again, we're gonna be using these all throughout the class. Okay? But I'll do it again here for you. Do it, we'll go in exactly the same order. So we'll start with the operating cash flow. This is the money that the firm generates and spends during its normal operations. So EBIT is revenue minus costs minus depreciation. So that's our normal revenue minus costs for the firm. We add back depreciation because it's not a cash expense and we only wanna look at cash flow here. And then we subtract taxes because on the income statement, taxes is our remaining cash uh, expense here. All of this comes from the income statement, EBIT of 2000 plus depreciation of, sorry, well, 400 minus taxes of 300 gives us an operating cash flow of 2100. Net capital spending, do we use any of this money to make any new investments in fixed assets? So net capital spending is our ending fixed asset minus our beginning fixed asset. And again, we add depreciation back here because we don't want to look at the accounting numbers. We just want to look at the actual purchases and sale of fixed assets. So our ending fixed assets in 2012, 3,400 minus our beginning fixed assets in 2011 of 3,100. Uh, we add back our depreciation expense and we see that we did spend some money this year buying new fixed assets. Um, so we spent 700 of our leftover 2100. Did we spend any more of this money on our working, our current assets? Maybe we bought some more inventory, maybe we increased our savings account, so we increased our cash account. Um, we wanna look at the, what's called the change in networking capital to determine that, and that's our ending networking capital, current assets minus current liabilities minus our beginning networking capital, also current assets minus current liabilities. Uh, so working capital in 2012, 4,400, 4,400 minus 1,500, all of that minus our working capital in 2011, which is 3,500 minus 1,200. And that gives us Again, we have an investment in working capital here of 600 for the year. Uh, so I tend to think of this as, uh, the easiest way to really think about this is that we increase our savings account. Maybe we, we wanted to uh, be careful Go, going forward, we wanna have a little more cash, uh, or we increased our inventory holdings because maybe we were selling out of our product and we wanna make sure that we don't do that. Okay. Uh, so there is, uh, we have some money left over. That's gonna be our cash flow from assets. Again, we can, we can see that we can, uh, and then we can calculate it directly. Right. So our cash flows from assets is operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus the change in networking capital. And that's gonna be 2100 minus 700 minus 600. And that means we have $800 uh, in cash remaining. After we've made all our investments, paid all our expenses, there's still some cash left over. That cash has to be paid back to our, or, or distributed, either paid back to our loan, the people who made us loans, or distributed to the owners of the firm. So we know that $800 total has to be distributed to, to our stakeholders. We don't know what the split is gonna be, so we look at our cash flow to credit. I'm gonna see how much money did we pay back on our loans. Well, cash flow to credit is interest expense minus net new debt. Where net new debt is the change from in our long-term debt account uh, from one year to the next. So our interest expense here is $350 and the net new debt is 2012 long-term debt minus uh, 2011 long-term debt. Uh, and so we see that 
Uh, on the contrary, we uh, we pay back some interest, but we actually raise a little bit of additional debt. So we take out a small amount of additional loans here. Um, and, and, uh, and so we don't pay off any of our debt. Uh, so we do still pay off interest, um, but some of that money comes back to us in the form of new debt. That means that the rest of this money has to go to our equity holders. We're distributing it to our equity holders. And we can see that by solving for what we call cash flow to equity. Cash flow to equity, again, is similar. It's dividends paid minus net new equity. All right, so we want to look at the change in our equity account, which is common shares. We pay out dividends. We see that on our income statement. We pay out $500 worth of dividends to our existing shareholders. And then we see that our equity, our common share account, does not change from year to year. So we don't raise uh, new shares or we don't pay off our old shares. Um, we simply just pay out a big share of profit to our existing shareholders and we pay out $500. All right, so it's pretty easy here to see that the identity holds because cash flow to equity or our cash flow from assets from the investment perspective is 300 plus 500, which is 800. And so we see that the identity holds here.